Okay, I'm back ladies and gentlemen. We wrapped up this in our last video, but there's something about it I wanted to show you. So we'll run the program. We'll get the JavaScript code. When we write programs, when we design things, when we design process flows, if you become a manufacturing engineer, you're going to design the flow of process, the flow of materials, the flow of inventory. Um, chemical engineers or anybody else having to do with plumbing, pipes, you're going to have a flow of the liquid or the gas through your system. And, and we and there's a tool called flow charting, and I want to go to that. There we go. Here's a flow chart of this program that we just wrote. And we start with the symbol. It's an oval. This is what's called a terminator for the start and the stop. There's only one each in a program, in a computer program. And this diagram tells what happened, what the computer does next. The arrows tell the direction. Well, you go from here to here. That's the next step. This is this circle is called a connector. It's important so that we don't get confused about which way to go. You can have two inputs. You can have multiple inputs to a connector, but only one output. The diamond here is a decision. So it is like the while. While, and I mentioned before, a condition. And this is the start and this is the finish. These two little curly braces say start the block and end the block. In the old days, you could move out of the block in non-structured languages like Fortran and BASIC, you could leave this block. In our modern era, you can't. Once you're in that block, you're in that block of code. MATLAB does things differently. They don't have an opening parentheses, but they do have an end statement. You have to end out MATLAB blocks with an end keyword, E-N-D. MATLAB also has the while loop. So that's the same as JavaScript between MATLAB and JavaScript. Okay, back to the flow chart. So there's the while, this is the start of the while loop and the condition, condition not at end. Start of the while loop. If it's true that you haven't finished, then you go to this part of the loop, you move the, the vehicle forward and then after you're done moving forward, you go back to the beginning of the loop, you go back to this connector, and you do it again. Until you finally get to the end. You're at the end. So not an end is false now. You drop out, and that's the end of the program. And comparing it to the JavaScript, you drop out. You don't have an end keyword. It doesn't say begin up here and end down here. You don't have those keywords. Different languages have variations on this. I think uh, the developers of the languages said, why do we need something that says start and end? Everybody knows it's the start and the end. So why even say it? Why even fool with it? So you'll note indentation also. If we go back to the flow chart, you'll notice the indentation. The flow goes from top. The convention is in computer languages, it goes from top to bottom, which corresponds to the top to bottom structure of this code and the indentation. So here we have the while statement and this process, a rectangle, by the way, is a process box. So this process box is to the right of the main flow. You have a side flow, a side channel, if you will, process box. The 
so you have, uh, and then, then of course, the, go back to the. Eventually, you get back to the main channel, and you come to the end. There's the, there's the end. So I'm going to expect you to flowchart your programs as well. JavaScript flowchart. Describe and explain. So that's also part of your assignment. Describe and explain what you did and why you did it and how it works. Okay. Let's see. Oh, one more thing. One last thing before we go back to the Blockly stuff. In modern languages, people often won't show this line because we know with C, MATLAB, Pascal, any kind of structured language. Structured was the step before object-oriented, by the way. So we went from unstructured languages like BASIC and FORTRAN. We still did everything step by step. But after you moved forward, you could go anywhere else. Nowadays, structuring means you can't leave the block. Once you go into the true side of this while statement, or the false side for that matter, or excuse me, false is outside the block. But once you go into the true side, you can't leave it. You'll get an error in your program. You don't even have the commands to leave it. You've got to stay inside of it until you're done with all your tasks and then you come back. So people said, well, okay, we know that when we get to here, when we get to the end of this block, we just, we're just going to go back to the beginning. So we're going to omit this line. That means we also don't need this connector either. We assume it's going to be there. So in modern languages, this is how a flowchart might look. Instead of the first thing I showed you, people might write it like this. Either way is equally valid. This is, this is a shorthand. Omitting, omitting this line is just shorthand. Okay. Well, let's uh, go back here. Okay, we're ready to move on. That took a while to describe flowcharting. Now, when you write a program, so first thing we're going to do is move forward, then we're going to turn left. Uh, move forward, turn right. So move forward, turn left, move forward, and keep repeating that until we get to the end. And will that work? So forward, left, forward, left, forward, right, and forward. And we're back, we're back to, so we're, instead of this corner, we arrive at this corner. And do we need, oh yeah, we have to turn right. Forward, turn left, forward, turn right. And we're, we've gone from this corner and we're pointed to the right to this corner and we're pointed to the right. So, and we, and if we just repeat that, it ought to work until we're done. So let's run the program. Yay, we won. Here's your JavaScript that you'd copy. You'll notice in the process, I'm just going to copy all of this and go back to my Word document. We go to the flowchart. A process can contain more than one step. There we go.
and then all we have to do is move the arrow here and the connector drag it down okay drag word is not responding it's it's brains are I don't know what's wrong with his brains Anyway, you get the idea. We move the connectors back to where they're supposed to be. There we go. There it is. So now this is our new flow chart. It's the same as the old one, except you can have multiple steps. That's the key point about this particular activity. And I'm going to end here for now, and we'll move on to the next level next.